Hello, hello, hello. You're tuning in to another episode of The Wonderkin Show. Today's topic. Panthers versus Ravens. <laughs> Yo, listen. I I have high expectations for this game and we're listen. A lot of stuff are going on in this game that have to be discussed. And this should be a game that we blow them out. Blow them out. The Bengals showed the week previously that they can't stop the run, that the Panthers cannot stop the run. Joe Mixon had five touchdowns against them and like 150 yards rushing by himself. By himself. Trust me, I know. The reason why I know is because I have Joe Mixon on my fantasy team. <laughs> so I won that real easy. Finger licking good. Ah! <laughs> but yo, listen, we got to break it down because this should not be a game that we have any problems with, right? I know the game is tomorrow, but we're not going to be covering it tomorrow because we're all going to be on the edge of our seats waiting for the game to happen. One o'clock and then it happens and then we go about, you know, business as usual. But I will say this. As much as everybody, and I'm included, thinking that this should be a blowout, Baker has played well against our team. Very well against our team. And I don't want him to have a resurgent game against our team. This should be a game that the defense doesn't allow not even 10 points. 10 points should be the... And anybody that's out there saying, oh, you Nitro, you should be more willing and more lenient towards the defense. Why? Why? With the amount of talent that we have at the defensive end, I should expect anything less? Remember, remember, a lot of the stuff that goes on in this team is said that we're getting great players on the defensive and uh, defensive side of the ball, right? And that sometimes takes away from offensive weapons. So if that side's going to get all the talent, I don't want to hear no excuses, especially against a team that lost Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> and Baker Mayfield right now, I think is 36th. In QBR, if I'm not mistaken, look, I thought, I'm going to be real with you. I always stand 10 toes down on anything that I say. I thought that Baker was going to go to Carolina. And with the weakness of the NFC, I thought that they were going to win 9 to 10 games. That ship has sailed. Now, can they still win their division? Yeah, the Bucks just fall flat on their face still. But, I mean, I, did, I thought, I personally thought, that Baker was going to have a, a comeback year. I, I did. And if I say something, I stand on it. Even if I'm right or wrong, you will always get that from me. Transparency. Uh, but when it comes to this game, we should not have no problems. None. This should straight up be a game that Lamar or the running game. I'm talking we should put up 35 or plus points. Easily. Easily. Like, Lamar should walk on to that field thinking there's nobody that can stop me. There's nothing you can do to slow me down, and, there's, and there won't be anything that you could do to hinder our offense, much less the defense. Because here's the thing. Baker, the O-line has not been playing great in Carolina. Now, to be fair, their running back, forgot his name, that took over for Christian McCaffrey, has been running his butt off. He's been doing great. But outside of that, there hasn't been no like, oh my God, this is some great, great magical uh, <laughs> uh, play that we're doing or magical uh, calls that we're calling. Nothing. It's just you have a player that is playing outside of his mind for an X amount of time and they're hoping that he can continue it. But he's not, I don't think he's a, like a special player like how you get like a Derrick Henry or Christian McCaffrey. I don't think he's on one of those levels. But to be fair, we've seen Jonathan Taylor last year absolutely light the league on fire and then fall off the face of the map. So, I mean, <laughs> anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. But I'm going to go to the Panthers depth chart real quick because I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, I forgot his name. Right? Um, I really did forget his name. But here's the thing. He's been playing great. I want to say his... 
Is it Dante Foreman? I think that's who it is. I think it's Dante Foreman. Yeah, Dante Foreman. Bruh, he's been going crazy. He's been going crazy. And here's the thing. With our middle solidified with a great linebacker, that shouldn't be a problem. See, this is one of these games that there's no excuses. That's the reason why I'm holding them to such a high example, uh, a high standard, because there should be no example. There should be no excuses. You have Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, right, in the middle. That means two legit linebackers that should be able to stop the run. Okay, that's fair. You have DJ Moore that's still on that team. You have Marlon Humphrey. You have Hamilton. You have Marcus Peters. One receiver should not be able to beat you guys. So there's no excuses. I'm holding. I listen, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. It, it kind of comes off like I'm hating. Look, I've already said what I said. The Roquan, uh, Roquan Smith uh, pickup was a great pickup. It's a great addition to our team. Great addition to our team. I will never frown on getting good players. I just want equal or somewhere uh, relevant great players to go to the offensive uh, side of the ball also. That's all. That's all. And that should not be a problem because we all know what our deficiencies are on this team. But Baker Mayfield has had some amazing games against us. Amazing. And I don't want him having an amazing game tomorrow. Now, I heard some people say, oh, he could have an amazing game because maybe the, you know, the game is so far out of reach that they just start flinging the ball across the place. And I mean, if we're up four touchdowns and they want to start throwing the ball crazy, then I get it. You know what I mean? But it shouldn't be, oh, we're neck and neck in the third quarter and we're surviving off Justin Tucker's leg. That should not be the case. And I do not want to hear anybody tell me, oh, they're an NFL team. They get paid to play too. Not in this case. We've had how many days off to recoup, recover, rededicate, refocus, realign? That Think about how much time we had for all of this. We're going into this game relatively healthy. We're going into this game relatively rested. We're going into this, to this game with extra studying on that team because you've had an elongated amount of time of knowing that's the team you're going to go against and you have Lamar Jackson nobody nobody <laughs> should be arguing against this nobody we should beat them by 20 points especially after seeing what the Bengals did to them because the Bengals I mean, through the air, weren't really getting anything, but on the ground, they gashed them. And it shouldn't be a problem. Lamar Jackson, Kenyon Drake, Hill, like, we have guys that can run the ball. There should be no problem. We should easily, easily put up about 200 yards rushing on this team. I'm looking to be about 250 passing yards, maybe 180 rushing yards. We should be in the 400, uh, 450 yard uh, total uh, net yard range. We should be in that range. Uh, when you look at Lamar, even though he don't got the weapons right now, like on the outside, I think our weapons can do enough. And I think Doof should have a good game. You know, Robinson should have a good game. Who else? It's just, man, it's just one of those games that can start the trend. You ever seen a game that can light the wick of a season and all of a sudden that team goes on a four, five, six, seven, eight game win streak? This could be that game. They could be, we could be the buzzsaw that this team, you know what I'm saying, goes against and all of a sudden that gives us the confidence and it gives us the, the, the mindset of saying, let's put our foots on their throats when we have the chance. Because that's been the Ravens' biggest problem all year. Not being able to close games and not applying pressure when pressure has already been applied. Meaning, finishing the job. Finishing the job. 
Like, and here's the thing. I know that, you know, both sides can do better. I'm not saying Lamar's perfect, but for the most part, I think he's like fifth in the league in passing touchdowns or six or something like that. He's doing his job. We got, like, if, if Lamar is going to fling the ball efficiently and effectively and we have that run game kicking, we'll be fine. I am I'm worried. Not worried, but I am actually want to watch what this team's going to look like when Kohler gets back. Kolar. <sighs> I had a weird uh, discussion with somebody, and I had said that um, Kolar almost seems like they tried to draft a Mark Andrews clone. Now, here's my thing when I say a Mark Andrews clone, because Mark Andrews, for as good as he is, our team focuses the offense through him. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but what I'm saying is he, it's Mark Andrews-centric. And usually the other tight ends do not get the opportunity to shine next to him simply because he shines so bright. Now, my thing is that likely, and Mark Andrews should be on the field. Now, if Mark Andrews is not 100%, I don't want to see him on the field. I want him 100% when the, when the, when the, the, league, the, the season starts to dwindle down goes down and everything else. Then we got him. We got the rest of our guys ready to just hit it and go. Hit it and go. And look, I'll be real with you. I Listen, I'll never argue against one of the path of the least resistance because the Super Bowl is a Super Bowl no matter who you go against. Right? But there's a part of me that kind of wants to see the Bills in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. There's a part of me that wants to, yeah, get our our lick back a little bit. And we've never played Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Never. Now, some people might be scared of that. I'm not because I think that we have a, a good team. I will say that his team is not as explosive as they used to be. So, you know, it's we're all going through things. But if, th- if we can win this game... We can make a straight up like path to the Super Bowl because we can line it up that we get first um, in the AFC. That means the bye week. That means technically we only have to win two games and it's the Super Bowl. That's it. That's it. You win one game if you win the whole thing, right? For the AFC, right? You you win your division, you win your conference, whatever it else like that. You're the, the conference winner. Once you win that, it's only two games you got to do. You beat the first game, then you're in the AFC Championship game. And I think that this game can ignite the wick of our rocket to have us fly towards the Super Bowl. Listen, I don't want to hear no excuses, guys. None. None at all. Because none should be given. We have done enough on the defensive side of the ball that we could shut down the Carolina Panthers. Is DJ Moore special? You darn right he is. I wish he was on our team. Is Burns a great player? You darn right he is. He can rush the passer. But it shouldn't be enough to even put a dent into our unit. Because we, we don't have individual players. We have a unit. And the unit's decent. I just want more offensive pieces. Boy, listen. Comment down below. How much do you think we're going to win by? Because I'm looking at some of the spreads and everything else. I'm not saying I'm going to gamble on it, but I was looking at some of the spreads and stuff like that. And they got us, listen, Vegas and them got us at plus 13. They're saying that we have to, we're going to beat them by two or more touchdowns. If you don't understand, that is a blowout. A blowout. Can we do it? We ha- Listen, we've been up by 10 or more points against every team that we've played. The problem is it doesn't end that way. <laughs> it doesn't end that way. So we could, listen, we could end this game being up 18 and then they score and then we're only up 11. You feel what I'm trying to say? So that, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at it like, mm. but anything can happen, right? So look, like I said before, I got us winning. I I wouldn't I hope that we beat them by at least 20 points and I'm saying that the defense shouldn't be giving up more than 10 points. If if I if it's my way, I think we should win 35 to 10. 
35 to 10 is a solid number, right? What's that? That's four complete touchdowns. What makes it what 28, right? And then or 34. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So two field goals after that. Yeah. It's 34. My bad. I was off a little bit. But yeah, that's what I want to do. And I want to make sure that we have that. If I have my way, that's what I think the score should be. But make sure you comment below to tell me what you think the score is going to be for this next game. Because I'm thinking that we're supposed to be a blowout. But man, <sighs> the Ravens be letting me down in the fourth quarter. Like, we might be up by 20 and they're like, oh, we got the win, no problem. And they might just let them score. So make sure you put down in the bottom who you think, who you think not only is going to win, but what the score is going to be. Right? And then we'll discuss it. Um... Tomorrow evening after the game. So look, that's another episode of the Wonderkin Show. You guys know I love you guys. And I'm so grateful that you guys watch me. You guys can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me. And I appreciate that. Please remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and retweet. And make sure you guys leave comments. There's been people leaving comments, and I answer. I answer them. I like having, you know, communication is a two-way street, baby. <laughs> you got to be able to communicate with your peoples. <laughs> my wonder nights. <laughs> the wonder kid and my wonder nights. <laughs> so, yo, that's not true with another episode. And I got to get out of here. So, I mean, I got to get out of here, too. And y'all knows my slogan. Peace. <laughs> and I am out of here. Good luck, Ravens. Yeah.